Kia ora atero. Welcome fun out of the war on news. Your weekly sacred cow slaughtering assault on current affairs beam live from the palatial Stratus news bunker for a deep beneath the heart of the Greyland Republic. If this show ran out of time to write a joke for the opening segment, it would throw up this photo for current affairs credibility. Gosh, he's marvellous. And tonight's political media crimes against reason kill zone. Kiwi camp in Afghanistan, really secret CIA base. TVNZ focuses on Happy Feet's bladder infection. International indignation at human rights in Libya and other jokes. Tikitane fornicates off the constabulary, plus this week's Sex in the Super City and the Wanko the Week Award. Leading the war on news this week, brothers and sisters, the dairy industry have launched their new spokesperson to defend them from claims that they steal all our water, pollute our water with cow shit, and have the audacity to charge us prices at global rates. And the new spokesperson is a cow. Rosie the cow. I'm not joking. The dairy industry's response to the environmental degradation they cause the country is to appoint a cow as their spokesperson, or as they like to call Rosie, a cow ambassador. So I asked Rosie if she thought it was a bit rich of the dairy industry ducking hard questions about their environmental impact by appointing a species of animal that can't learn to speak English, let alone evolve a thumb on its hoof to type in order to answer my emails. I didn't get a reply. But it is such a brilliant tactic, I think other corporate polluters and wreckers of our environment should consider adopting new mascots to deflect that perception. Sea Lord could appoint Trevor the Tuna, who loves the All Blacks and Lion Red Beer and thinks anyone complaining about sustainable fishing practices is a pinko who needs to harden up and sink more piss. How about Colin Clean Coal as the next mascot for solid energy? He'll be friendly and wholesome and will believe in abstinence before marriage, no drinking or smoking, and be very open to 25% stakeholdings in him by Chinese companies. Brothers and sisters, nothing shows up the empty vacancy of aspirational politics better than the National Party list. According to the Nats Old Boys Club, 28% female representation is just about enough representation for women so they can have more time to work for less pay. <laughs> Nothing like being a second-class citizen in your own country. John Key is as surprised by the lack of female candidates the way Don Brash is surprised by the lack of Māori candidates. Very little else says political party of farmers and bankers than the beige brigade with the penis rankings they've managed to produce. The national party list equals land of the wrong white cloud. Brothers and sisters, Jeffrey Palmer managed to destroy any credibility he ever once had by overseeing a UN report so glaring in its injustice towards Palestine that one needs to take a moment before one can continue, so difficult is it, to swallow back my spleen and rage. <clears throat> so, according to Jeffrey, Israel was allowed to use force because the blockade is legitimate. That's right, folks. The blockade of Palestine is legitimate. So whatever atrocity Israel commits in international waters is A-OK -okay with the UN. Let's remember the list of banned items into Gaza. Remember, these items were banned because they helped terrorism. Frozen meat can be imported into Gaza. Fresh meat cannot. Why? Because fresh meat helps the terrorists. Candles can be imported into Gaza. Toys and school books cannot. Why? Because toys and school books help the terrorists. Pasta can be imported into Gaza. Chocolate cannot. Why? Because chocolate helps the terrorists. A blockade anywhere else is a declaration of war. Except in Israel's case. Jeffrey Palmer has managed to whitewash with blood wash. Bravo, Jeff. What a brave way to decide to destroy your credibility ever again for anything. Bravo. To the headlines, Farno, TVNZ News have released a statement. They will only be covering our Kiwi camp really being a CIA base in Afghanistan and critically examine their own role in being a puppet to government propaganda if Happy Feet agrees to do a Fashion Week show there and announces that he's replacing Sonny Bill Williams in the All Black Squad. TVNZ unfortunately can't cover how their own reporters were duped into being New Zealand military puppets as Mark Sainsbury is currently interviewing some of the female penguins Happy Feet is dating to see if wedding plans are ahead, which, 
if they are. Well, Mean TV NZ will carry live coverage of Happy Feet's wedding with Dame Jenny Shipley providing commentary all the while explaining why more Chinese investment in New Zealand will be a good thing. TVNZ management can't focus on Nikki Hager's new book, Other People's Wars, because they're too busy planning a seance with Shrek the Sheep to ask if he thinks Happy Feet's marriage can last the test of time. Fun up! If there is one overwhelming sense of anger from Nikki's brilliant new book, it is aimed at the New Zealand military and their attempts to lie outright to politicians about what our armed forces are doing and a deep contempt at the mainstream media in this country who have acted as puppets for army propaganda over our right as citizens in a democracy to know what is really going on. We have allowed our Kiwi camp to be a cover for the CIA, yet this base has been sold via the embedded mainstream media as some type of rainbow-coloured peace force planting unicorns and candy canes of love. Diane Espiner, one of the embedded mouthpieces, declares that he has been to Afghanistan, so does Vernon Small. Both note that the CIA were there, yet neither believed that information was newsworthy or relevant. I'm sorry. The CIA are using our bases as a front because provincial reconstruction teams don't get attacked the way forward operating bases do, but neither Vernon or Guy Smiley think that fact is newsworthy in any way, shape or form. Am I still on Earth? Have I been transported onto Venus, have I? With a culture that has a completely different standard of intellectual curiosity. Noting the US are using our base as a front isn't newsworthy. Beam me up now, Scotty. The mainstream media's self-censoring compliance with the New Zealand military and their outright willingness to don a flak jacket and helmet and play the intrepid journalist shtick is actually part of the problem. And it's not as if our team's actually built anything of any use with independent reports citing the spin work done that we've that, for the work that we've done for locals to hide what we're really doing was poorly planned and wildly exaggerated. But beyond the Kiwi camp front and our self-censoring mainstream media puppets is the shock that our military have lied and deceived our own politicians about what we're really doing in this war for America. Now we have managed to appoint someone as Governor General who may in fact have been party to war crimes, who was running a military who were making up their own foreign policy minus any criticism from our mainstream media pundits, shocks me. It's the willfully ignorant media leading the ignorantly willful public. Give war a chance is not a foreign policy. Moving on with the headlines, Fano. So all that international indignation over Gaddafi only goes so far, huh? While international voices have covered themselves in glory for opposing human rights abuses in Libya with the toppling of the regime, it turns out some of those international voices have been speaking out of both corners of their mouth. In information found by the new NATO-backed forces, it turns out China and Europe have been selling weapons to Gaddafi and the British had the MI6 kidnap and torture Libyan dissidents, one of whom, ironically, is now a commander in the new regime. Now repeat after me. Invading Libya is for human rights and not for oil. Invading Libya is for human rights and not for oil. Invading Libya is for human rights and not for oil. Invading Libya is for human rights and not for oil. See? Say it enough times and we can all keep turning a blind eye. Moving on with the headlines, Fano. Remember when police cheerleader Greg O'Connor claimed that the public would support the cop who arrested Sikitane for singing Fuck the police? Yeah, well, Greg shut his mouth this week, didn't he? Because police announced all charges against Tikitane had been dropped by arresting him. The New Zealand police had decided they weren't just the brutal arm of state suppression, they were also music critics. The mighty Tikitane was arrested during a performance at a Tauranga nightclub. He was performing when the police turned up for one of their tedious random inspections when Tiki busted out the very lovely NWA ditty, Fuck the the police. The Tauranga police decided they didn't appreciate the song and went back at 3 a.m. and arrested Tikitane, claiming he was causing behaviour likely to cause violence. Note, it wasn't the cops coming back at 3 a.m. to arrest Tiki for singing a song they didn't like that was behaviour that would cause violence. Oh no, apparently it's the performance of NWAs that can cause violence. How could him being alone by himself at the end of his gig have been behaviour likely to cause violence? Surely the violence was immediate and needed to be sought out then and there, but no, 
know how Poison Blue waited until the end of the gig to return and arrest Tiki. The police must be feeling some heat over their blatant abuse of power and decided this week to drop the charges. Put this on top of the treatment handed out to supposed loser in Christchurch alongside the new loosening of taser rules alongside the fake evidence police used to convict in the latest Innocence Project and you're getting a police force that doesn't deserve respect. Our cultural cringe of authority worship in New Zealand allows the police to get away with a lot. The way the All Blacks do when they cheat. The difference is that when the All Blacks cheat, it's just a dumb game that helps channel the violence in our society and creates manufactured chatter that dominates the mainstream media. When the police get away with cheating by abusing their power, we all lose. But are you feeling sexy? It's sex in the Super City time. The strain is starting to be felt as Auckland's inept public transport starts groaning under the cutbacks and weight of extra use as trains dump passengers off in the middle of nowhere, otherwise known as Avondale, because of faults with the line. These new public transport cutbacks mean services are so packed and inconveniently infrequent that New Zealand has finally managed to achieve that golden moment in Auckland public transport madness. Services so bad that no one wants to use them. Well done, public transport destroyers. Well done. We've got the cash for the bloody motorways, but nothing for more public transport when the world is visiting. Most governments use an event like the Rugby World Cup to upgrade their public transport, not degrade it. I foresee Auckland transport as shit. Ash becoming the highest trending tweet on Twitter as overseas visitors are welcome to the hate crime that is public transport in New Zealand. But now let's finish the show by handing out this week's Wanko the Week Award. This week's Wanko the Week, brothers and sisters, has to go to the Udawera terrorism fiasco. The Udawera 18 were a group of chums who played soldier up in the ranges and were targeted as a radical training camp and as a result felt the full force of police paranoia and overreaction. Now, while I have very little time for activists or activist gangsters who pick up guns, Activists don't pick up guns. Activists win because our argument is better. And except that if it had been the National Front had been running around playing militia, then I would want an eye cast over their activities as well. But the overreaction in a land steeped in as much righteous historic injustice as Tuhoi land, however, in an almost identical incident to their original land confiscation, was ignorant and offensive in the extreme. Tama Eti and his merry militia are no more terrorists than I am, except they go camping. They should never have been apprehended in this manner with these powers. If the concern was so great, the police should have gone directly to Tama Eti to discuss the issue with him. The fact was that the local police would go to Tama Eti as an outreach person they could use to talk down any hot-headedness by any of the locals. When a blind, panicked post-9-11 parliament breathlessly passed the Terrorism Suppression Act in 2002, the Green Party and the Māori Party predicted it would be used against Māori and activists, not against terrorists. The act was found to be so impossible to use, the judge had no problem dumping it. Let's remember, this all happened on Howard Broad's watch. The same police clown responsible for the travesty that was the Peter Ellis witch hunt. No, 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 literally, Howard thought there were satanic witches involved in that case. How someone with such a record could be allowed to run something like this at such an immense cost to the taxpayer over a bunch of activists playing soldier should horrify us and we should all be very, 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 very angry. That's it for tonight, folks. Don't forget Citizen A plays Friday, 8 p.m. Freeview 21 and Sky 89. Follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Facebook site. It has all the shows posted up online and allows you to befriend other like-minded citizens for romantic news moments. Good night, New Zealand. You stay classy, Etera. Righto.